Alright, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Lazio career mode. I was almost gonna say Millwall, but obviously it is the Lazio career mode. Today we take on Cessna or Cessna in our first match of the Serie A today. As we take on the newly re uh, promoted side, obviously. And it should be an easy win for us here at the Stadio Olimpico. I did play a pretty strong side. However, I did have Jodovic up front instead of closer because I wanted to give him some chances. Obviously, he is a new signing for Lazio, or at least a signing they made just before the season. And I wanted to uh, to do well and give him his first Serie A goal. Anyway, Cesena, oh my god, I'm gonna have some trouble with those Italian names. Uh, they uh, got the first good chance of the game, and the only shots we fired towards the Cesena goal were from outside the box, at least here in the first half. Like, uh, right here with Lulic, where the goalkeeper had to make a pretty nice save, but it wasn't really the toughest one. However, starting off the second half here, Cesena uh, with the ball, but I was really, I was gonna pressure them in the second half. I really made that my goal to really pressure them and really go for this win because obviously this is a team we need to beat. And Kondreva, as you can probably read by the title, he was gonna have a very big episode. Right here, he couldn't score. Because the keeper made a nice save here. And now Lulic passed the ball over to Djordovic, who has a pretty nice attempt at the goal, but it unfortunately just misses wide. And now, just now, with an attack, however, we take the ball off of them. And just look at that beautiful counter attack right here. Edison plays to Djordovic, who plays a nice ball to Kandreva, and no one's, no one's gonna catch him here. And with a beautiful, oh my god, absolutely beautiful finish, he makes it 1 0 to us in the 58th minute but as you can see it was the left back who pretty much made the mistake he tried to uh, he kind of overcommitted there towards Djordovic and left a wide open a wide open lane for Kondreva to uh, make a run and and with his pace he was able to easily run through towards the goal and just look at that finish so beautiful it doesn't get any better than that. Or does it? Right here, Zaza is through. I've brought him on for Djordovic, but... Mm, he's still waiting for his first goal for us. And <laughs> wow, that was just a terrible finish, wasn't it? But Kondreva, again, getting through there with a nice body feint. Unfortunately, with his left foot. Couldn't hit the target there, but it was still, again, a pretty nice run by Kondreva as the ref blows his whistle here after a free kick by us and it's a 1-0 win to us which I don't know which could have easily been a draw to be honest if Cesena could have scored on that one occasion but on that day we were really no threat towards our goal. We now take on Genoa here in our second game of this episode away from home and I must say they have a pretty nice side there with Perrin in goal, Lestian in the left wing and also Juraj Kutska. However, I was pretty confident going into this game because we obviously also have a very good side, probably actually the better one. And we're also in great form, haven't lost a single game yet so far, haven't even dropped a single point. So even though we were away from home, I thought we could win this game. However, the first chance would fall to Genoa as we couldn't clear the ball here after it could after it crossed by Kutska as he gets the ball back here as he passes it over to his teammate. However, Machetti with a nice save there, and it's almost, I think it was uh, De Vrij who uh, tried to clear the ball and Eda was in his way and almost got in. And the second chance of the game would also fall to Genoa as Eda with a nice header here, that actually rhymed. However, he missed from pretty close range, to be honest. And we pass it out from the goal kick. We lose the ball here to Eda as he passed it over to Lestien. We pretty much clear it out, but Eda gets it back. He's trying to cross it in, Cavanda, however, heads it out and also Mari is able to finally clear it and from that we try to get a counter attack going and again, just like in the last game, the left back over commits and it's a free lane towards the goal for Contreva and again, it's pretty much a copy of the goal against Cesena uh, for, uh, for Contreva here, I mean, just look at that, again a finish to the top left corner, well not really quite top left corner, but it was very very much alike uh, this goal and his last goal and it's another goal for him the second one in the second game again giving us the 1-0 lead in this game and right here we try to clear the ball out it, it 
it's kind of a problem I have really like clearing the ball out for good the computer tends to uh, get some pretty nice chances off of my clearances and especially in legendary that is and I don't know how they haven't scored that it was pretty much a open goal however I make a big mistake here with Lulic just a stupid tackle by me and uh, rightfully so is a penalty as you can see right here in the replay just a terrible tackle on Lestien running right into him really no it really wasn't necessary was it and Costa makes it 1-0 here in the 52nd minute just shortly after the second half has started so that was actually a pretty huge blow to us I actually thought we could like really attack in the second half and possibly score the 2 and 3 nil and really put this game to rest but here with Machetti I complete I dove the completely wrong way and the penalty wasn't really necessarily well taken if I would have dove the uh, right way I probably could have saved it with Machetti however from the kickoff we get a nice chance going here which actually is uh, something you usually only see the computer doing but there Big Bear gets the ball with nice shot fail, cuts inside, passes it back outside to Keita who crosses it in, closer, can't get his header on target but who is there to put it in? Antonio Candreva and that was just such a weird goal to be honest. I could I could tell you that uh, that was planned like I wanted to you know uh, pass it over to Candreva and it was like a really nice goal by me but no I wanted to score with closer and somehow it fell to Kandreva with the header by closer not even going on target and Kandreva with a lot of luck uh, makes it 2-1 here and again it's Kandreva on the wing with the ball. She loses the ball here to Kutska but just look at that by uh, Lulic. Just doesn't give him any time to clear the ball away. Uh, another uh, look right here just no chance for him to clear it really. Nice pressure by him and also a nice finish which made it 3-1 to us and now it was Keita with the ball here just look at it just shoddy defending by them I don't know what was going on with them after the after the 2-1 it kind of seemed like they were completely out of sync back there and now it's Kandreva again with the ball and just look at it just the individual individual class Kandreva possesses is just unbelievable I'm gonna have so much fun playing with him uh, going forward and again it's him cutting him uh, cutting inside passing it over to Lulic and he gets taken down and Lulic pretty much redeemed himself for the second time now after the penalty he conceded first he scores a goal he scores a free one for us and now he also wins a penalty for us and who better to take this penalty than Antonio Candreva could he score his hat-trick here in the 81st minute and beat Perrin for his fourth goal in two games and obviously he can just a beautiful strike there Perrin stays in the middle has no chance to save that one and it is 4-1 to us and that's how the game would actually end to be honest I would I did not see this coming actually I first thought like if I had to make a prediction before the game I would have said like 2-1 maybe 1-0 victory but 4-1 I didn't really, like I said, did not see this coming. Uh, after the 2-1, they pretty much fell apart defensively, and it's a 9.7 man of the match rating for Antonio Condreva for this game. So we take on Udinese Calcio in the last game of this episode, coming back to the Stadio Olimpico, as we're looking for our fourth win in a fourth Serie A game. As you can see, I have Djordovic starting up front this time, and Condreva obviously he, ha he has to stay in there. The, the game against Udinese was actually just a couple days after the uh, Genoa game, so I had to rest a couple of players. As Udinese Calcio uh, went up with a 3-5-2 without Di Natale actually. The first half really was far from spectacular as you can see. In the 40th minute, really the only good attack was right here as Basta passed it back to Candreva and just look at that cross and look at that header. Oh my god, seriously. <laughs> We pretty much only scored beautiful goals so far in this episode. Tell me in the comment below which goal uh, you would say was the most beautiful in this episode so far. To be honest, I kind of have to say it was this one because just the delivery was great by Kondreva, the cross and the header, it was just perfect. No chance for the goalkeeper. Top right corner, it just doesn't get any better, does it? But yeah, tell me in the comment below 
which goals did you like the most out of this episode? And it's actually Djordovic picking up his first goal for us, which is very good to see. As we're into the second half now, and Udinese Calcio would get their first chance of the game right here as Fernandez receives the cross. As he gets tackled by Basta, however, uh, he doesn't lose the ball. They pass it over to Allen, whose shot goes over the bar. And I actually thought it was deflected, but no, it was just a terrible shot. However, Udinese would actually get a couple of good chances here in the second half, like here in the 57th minute as the shot just uh, goes wide and just look at how much space I have here with Edison no one was going to attack me and again it's a beautiful goal another contestant for goal of the episode but it was just shocking to see I mean this is legendary difficulty and they were so passive in the back right here they just let Edison go through have a shot and again we hit the top corner this time the top left corner and just look at that. <laughs> the, the, uh, the keeper didn't even bother diving for that one as it was hit perfectly and it's the 2-0 for us there and after that I probably go a little bit you know a little bit cocky maybe it's not, isn't the right word but I thought that we could easily win this game now and obviously Udinese had to score here with Gaio or Gaiho I'm really struggling with the names right now and after that goal, I actually decided to bring in Tunkara for Djordovic. Actually, that was before uh, before the goal, because I wanted to give him some playing time, because he is one of our best youngsters here. And there, that was actually very scary there. Di Natale's header uh, coming off the bar, and Marchetti finally was able to catch that. However, we would actually get a nice attack from that, as Konko passed it over to De Vrij, who passed it over to Biglia, and just... Very few people touch the ball in this attack, but we get up up front with Skuli. He crosses it over to Tunkara, but unfortunately his uh, header goes over the bar, which probably would have been saved had it gone on target. Anyways, the Vrij clears the ball here towards Ederson, and again it's Kandreva on it uh, on the ball. Can he score yet another goal here? Well, he tries his best, but he doesn't get through here as he had to cut back. Pass it over to Ledesma, who passed it over to Ederson. And he makes it 3-1 there. Again, a beautiful counter, which really could be a deadly weapon for us this season. At least it was in these last uh, three games in this episode. The last chance of the game would actually fall to Udinese, but even if Marchetti doesn't make the save here and they make the 3-2, free, the, uh, the free it obviously would have been too little too late as the ref blew whistle right after Kandreva has won the ball there. And it is a 3-1 win against Udinese at home, so a very nice result for us and so far our record couldn't be any better we actually have a game in hand on Juventus so we could possibly slip into first place as they have drawn a game anyways next episode we will also have a squad report as we are nearing the end of September so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this episode leave a like if you did subscribe for more Lazio Kareemot and support the series till next time see you guys then goodbye